All right then, gang. So before we dive into the CSS, let me first of all take a step back and talk about this whole philosophy of using a mobile first approach, which is what we're going to be using in this series. Now, the main idea here is to design and then code our websites for small mobile devices, first of all, and then gradually build on that design for larger devices and screens. So we'd start out coding for something with a small screen like a mobile, then extend it to tablets, then laptops, then desktops and larger screens, etc. Now, when we use this methodology, it's a polar opposite to what we used to do as designers and developers when mobile websites first became a thing, because back then, typically, we'd already have a desktop site and we want to create a mobile site based on that. And what we typically do is fudge our layouts and we'd squash things together and we'd hide things because they didn't look right on mobiles. And this approach oftentimes led to poor mobile versions of the site like this and also bad usability because we weren't really thinking about mobile sites from the offset and we just ended up with a squashed and rearranged version of the desktop site. Now, if you think about it, screen space real estate is a premium on a mobile. There isn't much of it. So we have to really think carefully about how we use it, what content we put on it and where we put it. And that's why now a lot of us as developers and designers, we switch to a mobile first approach in most cases when it comes to designing and developing websites. And that approach forces us to think a lot more about how we want the design to look on smaller devices, first of all, to make sure that we end up with a good user experience. And then once we have that initial starting point, it's then much easier to go outwards to a desktop size site because then we have more space to play around with and we can gradually add more content in, spread things out and rearrange it as things get larger. So that's the approach we're going to be using in this series. We're going to code our site for mobiles first of all, then we'll develop it upwards for small tablets, then large tablets and laptops, and then finally desktops and larger screens. So I just want to give you a quick preview of the designs and how I created these. So I'm in Adobe XD at the minute. This is where I created them. And I've got two designs here, one for mobile and one for desktop screens. Now, I started with the mobile design because that really made me think what's most important to put at the top and how do I order the content? Because you have to think more when you've got less space to do it. So I made the mobile version, first of all, and if I just press on play over here, we can preview that. So we have the little welcome screen at the top. Then we have some recent projects, then the skills. Then we have a contact form at the bottom and a footer. So I made that first of all, and then based on that, I expanded it to create a desktop version. So I rearranged content a little bit. I added some links that we'll need on a desktop version. I thought since you can scroll down this page pretty easy on a mobile, we don't need them up there. You could create a mobile menu if you wanted to. I just don't think this simple website warranted it. So I added those links in for a desktop site so we can quickly click on those to go to the different sections. And uh, down here we have some projects, but this time because we've got more space, I can lay them out a bit differently from left to right rather than top to bottom. And same with the skills down here. And in fact, let me just press play on this so we can see this a bit larger. OK, so we have the welcome, then the projects, then we have the skills left to right. And then finally, the form didn't really change uh, because it is just a simple form that sits in the middle and then the foot as well. Not much change. OK, so. That was quite easy, working backwards from a mobile to a desktop. I think if I would have started here and gone this way, my thoughts would be more along the lines of how can I squash all of this together? But because I started with the mobile, I didn't really have those thoughts. It was more of a case of, OK, well, I've got the content I need. Now I can just use that content and spread it out exactly how I want for a desktop website. OK, so they're the designs that we're going to be working towards in this series. Now, the next thing I want to do is just set up some media queries for the different breakpoints in our website so that we can decide when we want to start to lay things out differently. So we'll do that now. 
So then back in our project, I'm going to go to styles.css to add in some media queries. I've already added in a few different comments here, and this is just to outline the different things we'll be doing as we go forward. So in the next lesson, we're going to do things like create some variables, do a CSS reset, some base styles, etc. And then eventually we're going to get to do the mobile styles as well. Now we don't need a media query for the mobile styles because remember, this is our starting point. We're going to start with mobiles. We're designing the whole site with mobiles in mind. And then what we need to do is gradually add media queries for larger devices. So we're going to work upwards. Okay. So the next thing is going to be small tablet styles. So I'm going to do a comment for that and say small tablet styles. And then underneath this, we need a media query now to say, look, when a user's screen gets large enough, then I want to break the current styles and add some different ones. Right. So let's say at media to make a media query. And by the way, if you know nothing about media queries, definitely check out the HTML and CSS crash course where I go through that and then come back here. So we're going to say media screen to say target anything with a screen and a condition, which is going to be the min width of that screen is going to be about 620 pixels. So as soon as a user is on a device that has a width of at least 620 pixels in the viewport in the device browser, then we're going to show some styles that we place in here. So that is going to be for things like small tablets, right? Okay, so let me copy this. And next, we're going to target maybe large tablets and also laptops. So let me do another comment to say large tablets and laptops, like so. And then underneath that, I'm going to paste this in. And this time we're going to do a minimum width of about 960 pixels. So when a device gets as wide as this, 960 pixels, so for things like large tablets and small laptops, then we're going to then show these styles so we can rearrange our content again, again, working upwards. And then finally, we need a media query, which is going to detect larger screens. So things like desktops. So I'm going to say, right here, desktop styles, like so. And make sure this has an asterisk. Cool. And paste this in. And this time we're going to go with around 1200 pixels. So when we're on a device where we're viewing the website and the browser is 1200 pixels wide or more, then we're going to use these styles and we can rearrange things again. Okay. So again, we're going to start with some base styles up here and some fonts and variables. Then we're going to create the mobile styles because that's the starting point. Create the website for a mobile. Then we'll move on to styles for this media query, which is targeting anything when it gets to 620 pixels, things like small tablets. Then when it gets to 960 pixels, things like large tablets, then we're going to do some extra styles. Then finally, 1200 pixels for desktop styles. Now these things right here, these values, they can change depending on your website. You know, there's no hard fast rule to say it should be 620, 960 and 1200. These can be whatever you want. This just happens to work out well for the website that we're creating here. And if you wanted, you could add more media queries. You could have four or five if you wish. Okay. So in the next video, we're going to start by creating some base styles, a reset and some variables. And by that, I mean things like input fields, buttons and colors, things that don't really change dependent on the size.